Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking now at how to graph this function. But before we do that, let's first figure out what p of negative 1 would be. Now, remember from what we've learned about previously, this negative 1 is our input value, meaning that we're going to input that negative 1 into our function. So every time we see an x, we're going to replace it with negative 1. So to start out with, we would have negative 1 to the fourth power. Then we would add to that 8 times negative 1 cubed. Then the next term, we would have plus 20 times negative 1 squared. Then the next term, we'd have plus 16 times negative 1. So you can see what I've done here is I've just replaced all these x's with negative 1's. And you could type that in on your calculator, and when you do that, you'd get your answer. And your answer would be negative 3. So now let's look at how we would graph this. Now before we do that, let's look at the instructions. It says graph this function in the window. Negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. And negative 5 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 4. That is referring to our window setting. So we want to have on our window, we want to have negative 5 be the smallest value for x and 2 being the largest value for x. And we want negative 5 to be the smallest value for our y-axis and 4 to be the largest value on our y-axis. And so let's look at how we would do that first, and then we will graph that polynomial, the x to the fourth plus 8x cubed plus 20x squared plus 16x. So get out your calculators and go to the home button. We want to go to a graphing screen. Now make sure that you don't use a scratch pad. We want to use this graph icon down here. Now the default setting for your graphing calculator is that your x minimum is negative 10, your x maximum is a positive 10. Your y maximum is 6 and 2 thirds, and you can't see it right now, but our y minimum would be a negative 6 and 2 thirds. So we want to change those settings, so we're going to do that first. So if you go over to your menu button, and under menu, you see the fourth option is window zoom. We want to go up to the first option under window zoom, which would be window settings. So you should get to a screen like this. Now, again, we want our smallest value for our x to be negative 5. So we're going to put our x minimum then at negative 5. Our x maximum is going to be the largest value for our x, which we want that to be a positive 2. Now, you can leave your x scale as auto if you'd like, or if there's a particular scale you want to use on the x-axis, you'd put that here. So if I'm not sure what my calculator would give me if I wanted to have a scale of counting my 1s, I could just put 1 in here if I wanted to, and then my... I know my x scale would count my 1's. Otherwise, you could leave it as auto. Now, the y minimum, we want to set that to be negative 5. Our y maximum, we want to set that to be a positive 4. And again, you can leave your y scale as auto if you want, or you can put it in as 1, or if there's another, if we're using di larger numbers, we want to count by 10's maybe, or count by 5's. That's where you put, that's what you put in for the y scale. But you can just hit enter when you're ready to, when you have everything in here. And so you now your screen would look something like this. And so now we want to figure out, well, what the graph would look like. So we're going to type in our equation now. And that equation was x to the fourth. Now you've got to be careful, because when we start to do an exponent, anything I type will also be up here as my exponent. So after you type in x to the fourth, you want to hit the arrow button to the right to move your cursor down to the ground again. And then type in plus 8x. Again, we have to do a cube, so we have to go up as our exponent again. So we want to hit the arrow to the right to move the cursor back down. Then it'll be plus 20x squared. And you could use a squared button, so it automatically puts it in as an exponent. Plus 16x. And when you hit enter now, we should get a graph looking like this. So now it's easy to see that we have three x-intercepts. We have an x-intercept at 0, an x-intercept at negative 2, and an x-intercept here at negative 4. My y-scale, if you look at the y-scale, we set it, have it set to auto, and it's important to recognize here that your y-axis are counting by halves as your scale. But that would be your graph of that function. So in your assignment, if they ask you to sketch a graph of the function, that's what they're looking for you to do. So you, and if they say to change the window settings, that's how you'd go about doing it. So with that, good luck now as maybe you work on some of those problems. Otherwise, if you're still working on this lesson, you want to go on to the third video for this lesson to see how we can find the degree and the leading coefficient when we're multiplying two polynomials.